Duke from Cameron Indoor Stadium. And this game is another in a long line of critical games for Georgia Tech. Well, for Georgia Tech, this season has come down to fighting for an NCAA berth. At 15 and 8 with teams like DePaul, Clemson, and North Carolina coming up, Bobby Crims has got to get his team motivated. A loss today would seriously hurt their chances. Now, Duke is a lock for the NCAA tournament. They are 21 and 5 already. And Thursday night when they beat North Carolina State, again, they played very well and played as a team. Well, that particular game was a tribute to Duke's depth on the bench. Here you have a, a void uh, left by the absence of Billy King who's right. injured and Kevin Strickland comes in, plays the position he's not accustomed to playing, gets 10 big rebounds and overall fills that void which was a defensive and maybe an, a rebounding type of void and he did an excellent job. Critical game for Georgia Tech, big game for Duke, so stay with us. Georgia Tech and Duke coming up from Durham, North Carolina. Right now, let's go back to the studio and John Duke. The Blue Devils this year are 21-5, and five, ranked 16th, 17th, or 18th, depending on which poll you like to follow. Georgia Tech is 15-8. and eight. Should be a good one. Let's get the starting lineups from public address announcer Art Chandler. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Your starting lineups for today's game for Georgia Tech at forward, a junior from Baltimore, Maryland, at 6'7", number 33, Dwayne Farrell. For the Blue Devils at forward, a 6'10", sophomore from Bowie, Maryland, number 35, Danny Ferry. At forward for the Yellow Jackets, at 6'9", and a sophomore from Crestview, Florida, number 20, Tom Hammonds. And for Duke, at 6'7", and a sophomore from Fort Washington, Maryland, number 33, John Smith. At center for Georgia Tech, a junior at 7 feet from Manhattan, New York, number 44, Antoine Ford. For Duke, at 7'2", and a senior from Whitehall, Ohio, number 51, Martin Nestle. At the guards, for Georgia Tech, at 6'4", and a freshman from Smyrna, Georgia, number 13, Brian Oliver. And for the Blue Devils, at 6'3", and a sophomore from Mercer Island, Washington, number 14, Quinn Snyder. At guard for Georgia Tech at 6'4 and a senior from Manhattan, number 45, Bruce Dalrymple. For the Blue Devils at six feet and a senior from Falls Church, Virginia, number four, Tommy Amaker. Head coach for Georgia Tech, Mr. Bobby Kremens. And for Duke, Mr. Mike Krzyzewski. Take a look at the officials who will control today's game. Dick Paparo, Hank Armstrong, and Nolan Fine. Paparo in the middle. And we are set to go. Craig Neal not in the starting lineup. He has not been since Brian Oliver replaced him earlier in the year. But when Craig Neal comes into the ball game for the first time, that's when the Duke fans are really going to react. Well, I tell you, he may come out here and, and probably have the incentive to do well apart from the uh, the... the I guess the importance of this particular game. But Craig Neal has found his identity in coming off the bench, whereas before he was scoring, he wasn't as effective. Now he's coming off and doing pretty well. All right, the matchups here, the most interesting one could be if Hammonds ends up against Ferry. Well, actually, right now it seems that Ferry and Farrell are going to these matchups, and that's going to be difficult because Danny Ferry is going to be called to play Farrell out on the floor, something he's not accustomed to doing. Martin Nestle at 7-2 will jump center against Hammonds, and Hammonds gets the tip to Oliver. Georgia Tech really does not have a true point guard in the lineup because Oliver is more of a second guard, but he's been playing the point. Right now, we've got Quinn Snyder matched up against Bruce Dalrymple defensively, and I have to think that Dalrymple is going to try to go inside a lot today. Antoine Ford got away from Nestle, and it's a 2-0 game. Well, they're going to go to Antoine Ford and probably try to exploit the inside game here with Danny Ferry and, and John Smith playing inside. Mostly, they're going to try to go to Martin Nestle, who may be perceived as the weak link here. Smith with a turnaround jumper, very effective inside, but Ford has the rebound. 
tempo will be a big factor in this game, too, Lynn. Duke would like to keep it slow. Well, both teams defensively don't do anything really quirky or gimmicky. They like to play good, tight defense, and Georgia Tech playing a pattern game is in their particular favor. Dalrymple with a bad pass, tosses it out of bounds. One of the few mistakes you'll see that young man make, and Bobby Cremins on the sideline, and he bumped into the official who was back, uh, going back down to court, and Bobby was up trying to get instructions to his player. And you can tell the seriousness of this game is affecting even the most experienced. And Bruce Dalrymple makes it uncharacteristic over there. Nestle blocked by Ford, and Oliver has it. Duke got back quickly on defense. Ford blocked by Nestle, and the foul on Martin Nestle. And again, Georgia Tech recognizing that Nestle may be the weak link defensively. Go right to Antoine Ford, the second time down. Here Ford just turns around and shoots in Nestle's face. Nestle, on, on one hand, wants to return the favor of the block shot. But on the other hand, a guy turns around, you're playing behind him at seven feet. It's not going to be often that you're going to block a shot. He did get the block, but he got him with the body. Ford will have a chance to add to his total and does with the first free throw. 3-0 three Georgia Tech. And oftentimes you've heard Bobby Kremen say that the key to this season would be the play of Antoine Ford. And Antoine Ford has been inconsistent of late. But today, if you get him on the mark and gets his confidence up, he could be in for a big day. He has all four Georgia Tech points. And here comes pressure. They break it to Amaker. Pulls up for three. And Tommy Amaker has not shot well this year from that range. And they said he had a toe on the line. So it is a two-pointer. In that instance, though, Duke decided to attack this press. They beat it, and then you attack it. You don't wait for the defensive players to recover. Here's a push. Danny Ferry shoved Farrell. That's one on Ferry's second team foul. And here's Farrell. Here he is moving out on the court. Ferry's not accustomed to playing people that far away from the basket. With Dwayne Farrell, he's going to have to give him a lot of room and respect to his quickness. But on the other hand, he's got to get to him because he's going to be another focal point of this Georgia Tech offense. First foul on Danny Perry, who was just playing brilliantly during the ACC portion of the schedule. And there's another brilliant player, Tom Hammonds. Hammonds strong inside. Good turnaround jump shot. Uh, this front line in Georgia Tech is going to be looking for a big day today because they're really counting it inside. This is Nestle. Picks it back up to Queen Snyder. That's the three. Hammonds with a rebound. In the last dozen games, Hammonds is averaging over 17 points a game, shooting almost 60% from the floor. There's Hammonds, guarded by Smith, 15-footer. And Amaker in among the trees, but he lost it, and Dalrymple, as usual, gets the loose ball. And it's actually Dalrymple's presence that brings Tommy Amaker to the basket. Dalrymple and Oliver are great offensive rebounders. Four jump hook over Nestle. It's 8-2. to two. And there's nothing like confidence, Mike. You get a couple in, you get the things rolling, and next thing you know, you're on top of the world. First two and a half minutes of this game, Antoine Ford has six points. He only averages five points a ball game. Loose ball knocked out of bounds out to the Yellow Jackets. Well, Duke right now seems to be a bit tentative. It's not as though Georgia Tech is playing some type of tricky defense, but they are playing sticky defense. And John Smith that time just mishandled the pass. Oliver working against one of the best defensive guards in the country, Tommy Hammond. Hammond. And it's 10-2. Georgia Tech really burning it up to start with. Well, Mike Krzyzewski is now calling out for a pattern type of offense. He wants to get a good shot. But that was a no-no. You can't play behind Tommy Hammonds when he's in the paint. And Mike Krzyzewski also not going for his own timeout. He'll wait for the TV timeout. They get to Smith. He's stripped on the way up. Foul is going to be on Antoine Ford. Well, here's the pass inside. Duke runs a lot of their offense, and they allow it to filter a lot through Danny Ferry. He makes a good lob pass into John Smith, who is surrounded by three Georgia Tech players. Georgia Tech is not about to give up the easy inside shot without some kind of contest. Looked like the foul may have been on Dalrymple. It didn't look like Ford had much of anything in there, but he'll pick up his first. And Smith, a good free throw shooter, trying to get Duke to cut into an eight-point lead. Amazing how quiet it gets in here when Duke shoots. This is a partisan crowd. <laughs> this is a guy who's probably come from nowhere in a lot of people's minds. He didn't get much time last year. Sure didn't. This year, he's pretty much carrying the load, especially in crucial situations. 
Here comes the pressure from the Blue Devils. Here again, Ferry is matched up with Terrell. Outside, Terrell's going to try to use his ball handling ability. Well, he lost at that time. Fortunately for Georgia Tech, Oliver was right there to pick it up. Still looking for Ford. Hammond. He is on target again. Six points for Tom Hammonds. It's 12 for Tech. Another player not accustomed to playing people out on the floor is John Smith. That time it was a pick, but Smith was around the pick easily. He just didn't get out in time with Tom Hammond. Here is the steal by Oliver. Got it back into Dalrymple. Dalrymple, bad pass. Tried to get it ahead, and Snyder intercepted. A little bit too much by Bruce Dalrymple, but the athletic ability of Dwayne Farrell shows that Georgia Tech's overplay defense is starting to upset Duke. They're throwing really ill-advised passes. He's got a little greedy on that last possession. Smith in his range, missed the shot. Got a jump ball situation. Nestle at 7-2, tied up by Dalrymple at 6-4. And Bruce Dalrymple is a very, very strong rebounder. We have a timeout on the court. 15 minutes and 33 seconds to go in the first half of play for a 12 to 4 lead. And they've done it by hitting five of six shots. Lynn, the, the key so far, I think. Danny Ferry hasn't touched the ball while it's been in play. Look, well, he has had difficulty getting his hands on it. Good defense by Georgia Tech. Offensively, Georgia Tech is getting the ball inside. They're going to try to establish their inside game, and that'll open it up. Duke's pressure type of defense is going to have to maybe make some adjustments, sag a little bit now, allowing Georgia Tech the outside shot. Pharrell foul on the way up by Quinn Snyder. That's one on Snyder, the third team foul against Duke. So far, it's been Hammonds with six and four with six. Well, this is a mismatch right here. Quinn Snyder not even getting any help. The only thing he could do is put his hands up and allow Pharrell to get the shot. That time he opted to try to steal the ball. That was a non-shooting foul, so they'll inbound. This is Pharrell. He's being guarded by Ferry. They may have to switch that matchup and put Ferry on Hammond. Ford couldn't handle it. Here comes Amaker. And he'll hold up. Snyder for three. That'll get you back in a hurry. Well, it was a good decision by, by Tommy Amaker. Even though they may have had what you call numbers going down, they had the advantage on the break. The two players weren't coming down fast enough or looking for the ball. Amaker backed up and decided to hit the man who was in good position. And now the crowd's in it as Dalrymple has his first shot inside. And Bruce Dalrymple will be looking all day to post up Quinn Snyder or Tommy Amaker, whoever has the difficult task of guarding him. Amaker, Snyder just inside that three-point line, and that one just barely nicked the net. With Oliver and Dalrymple in there, Georgia Tech probably has the best rebounding backcourt in the country. Hammonds. Nice move to get by Smith, but cut off on good help by Amaker. Georgia Tech playing very patiently right now. This is their game. They like to run the patterns. They have great continuity. And the foul is going to be on Antoine Ford. Offensive foul for pushing underneath two on the seven-footer. And Bobby Kerman says, what? And just as we speak about patience, here's Antoine Ford committing one of those impatient fouls. The man fronts him, and he decides to ward him off with his hand instead of allowing the play to develop, use the defensive player's positioning against him, and maybe get open for a shot if the ball goes up to the top of the key. Freshman James Mundlin is into the ball game. 6'11", 206 out of Aiken, South Carolina. He's played well off the bench, especially in the latter part of the season. And the importance of this game has forced Bobby Kremlin to go to him early. He can't, Bobby can't take any chances right now. Amaker, bad pass, a very rare mistake by Amaker. Mike, the way this game is going right now, and you look at the, the character of the Duke team in this particular instance, you'd think that it was their type of need situation that they needed this game more than Georgia Tech. Wouldn't you, though? Pharrell to Hammonds. Duke playing a tight 2-3 zone right now. They figured they're going to try to close up the inside. Oh, my. Oliver missed, but Hammonds with the rebound off balance. He missed the follow. Three on two, Amaker in the middle. Three-pointer. Barry saved it, Dalrymple knocked it away. Smith gets it. 
a break for the Blue Devils as the loose ball went to the wide open John Smith. And it was good hustle by Bruce Dalrymple. D uh, Danny Ferry almost nonchalant at that particular recovery, but luckily a fortuitous bounce was in Duke's favor. 14-9. Duke has not gone to its bench. Hammonds. He has eight points, and it's 16-9. And it's buckets like those that are very important as this game progresses because it keeps the Duke fans out of this particular ball game. Snyder, and they are a factor. Barry, really, it's the first chance he has had to throw a pass today. He had eight assists the other night. Here, Tommy Amaker, in a three-on-two break, decides to pull up for the jump shot. He had Danny Ferry on one end and John Smith on the other, but um, they were covered. Good uh, transition defense by Georgia Tech. Smith will come out, and Ala Abdel Nabi, number 30, checks into the ball game. As does Robert Bricky, number 21. A couple of freshmen for Mike Shashevsky. Both Bricky and Abdel Nabi will play big roles here with the Washington. Barry, after a brilliant fake, got Hammonds in the air, got his first two, 16-11. And I would suspect that Duke is, wants to see more of Danny Ferry playing in close to the basket and back to the basket. He's got to be more or less a power player today. Oliver and Dower for the Georgia Tech guards. Hammond wanting the ball inside, being fronted by Abdel Nabi. Georgia Tech forced to adjust to this 2-3 zone right now. They find it a little more difficult to get it inside, but they do here. Hammonds has 10, make it 10 points. And it's 18-11. And as we spoke earlier about that emotional aspect of this game, considering the altercation that Georgia Tech and Duke had the last time they met, Tom Hammonds was involved in it as well. Alley -oop to Bricky, and Amaker laid it right on the edge of the rim, and Robert Bricky has his first two. Well, Bricky is an athlete. He's the guy that creates a lot of excitement for this team. He leads, he's one of the leaders in dunks, and that was a great pass by Tommy Amaker. They got the crowd back into this ball game. Five-point lead for the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech, who are desperate to win one here. Oliver for two. And as I can't mention it enough, those right back at you baskets are the type that Georgia Tech's going to need all day if they're going to keep this lead. Oliver out of Smyrna, Georgia. Also plays excellent defense for this ball club. Barry and offensive foul on Danny Ferry. Pretty two, excuse me, Link. A pretty tough call, Mike. Sure Although was. The official, the official was right on the money there. He's standing, he's standing right there on the baseline. Here, Bricky gets behind this man. Pharrell takes his eye off. Timeout, 10.46 to go in the first half. George on top of Duke. Our score here at Cameron Inn on Danny Ferry and the fourth team foul against Duke. Field goal percentage, Duke way down, and Georgia Tech hitting 9 of 12 so far. That's given them a seven-point lead. Still haven't seen Craig Neal, and I think that's a function of Bobby Crimmins wanting to keep the crowd in control a little bit because he knows they're going to get on Craig Neal when he comes in. An important change here. Duke is playing man-to-man, -man, and they got Robert Bricky on Dwayne Farrell. Bricky's a little quicker and better able to play Farrell outside. Hammond's got the loose ball, buried it over Abdel Nabi. He has a dozen, and it's a nine-point lead. And that's going to be the liability when you take Danny Ferry out and you're not able to match anyone but Abdel Nabi against Tom Hammonds. Tom Hammonds, being a sophomore, has a great deal of experience inside. And absolutely fearless. Smith tried to touch pass, and Abdel Nabi got it. Well, I'll tell you, when you're at the high post and you know the player's a good pass and you've got the pressure of that pass, if you give a player room, he's going to be able to thread the needle just in that manner. Mistake North Carolina State made the other night. They let Danny Ferry just stand back there and pick his spots. And here is Smith jumping over the top of Hammonds and committing the personal, not a good foul. Again, Tom Hammonds establishes position inside strong. He wants the ball, and the Tech players are going to try to get it to him as often as they can. He's got the hot hand. Craig Neal on the Georgia Tech bench. We're under the 10-minute mark. Normally, he is in there by now, and he's been playing very, very well. And the fans do make a difference here. Munlin outside to Oliver. And here's the whistle. The foul is going to be against Abdel Nabi inside, holding on Tom Hammonds. And, Len, I think you're absolutely correct. The officials are not going to let much go before they blow that whistle for them. Well, particularly inside, where all the hand playing, all the contact, 
is usually had, the officials are going to, again, set the rules, and they're going to allow the players to decide their own fate after they set down these particular rules. Next foul, Georgia Tech will be in the bonus, and Hammonds is lighting it up. He has 14 of the 24. Well, Duke is at a disadvantage in that matchup. Hammonds has the ability going outside, and he can play inside. Duke doesn't have anyone who can really stay with him at this time. Strickland dogged by Dalrymple, waiting for a five-second count. Here's the steal. Oliver. Amaker strikes him. It's a four-on-one. And they may have overpassed that one, but they'll get the foul out of Dalrymple. Well, good hands by Tommy Amaker. He starts this whole thing off. With, with great hands inside. Here he takes away the area that Oliver wants to go, baseline, strips the ball, and now he starts to break. Head is up, he's looking up court. Here, Aldonabi as a trailer, recognizes Smith on the baseline. It was a good pass, and Bruce Dalrymple tried to at least stop the three-point play, which he does. Smith at the line, he has five points, and has hit all three free throw, three, three throw attempts in the first sure. half. I knew I'd get that right if I just kept trying. 8.57 left, first half. Smith hits again, and it's 24-17. Danny Ferry back in the Duke lineup. And Smith will sit in. Mike Krzyzewski in rotating his big people up front. He's looking for the right combination here to put the clamps, particularly on Tom Hammond. Even without Billy King, is out with a broken wrist. Duke is uh, a little bit deeper than Georgia Tech, and the foul will be on Amaker. That's one on Tommy Amaker. More importantly, it is the seventh team foul against Duke with 8.47 left. Well, Amaker is a ball-hawking type of guard. That time, he got his hands caught up just a little bit and was detected by the official. But he's going to do that all day, and without someone who has the experience like a Craig Mailer Jr. in the backcourt, Brian Oliver, the freshman, is going to be left with the ball-handling responsibility. And, you know, that's a serious role to play, especially when you're up against a Tommy Amaker. Oliver is a uh, pretty good free-throw shooter, 69%. Georgia Tech is the team, the best in the ACC shooting almost 75 percent. Oliver hits them both. Georgia Tech not making many mistakes here in the first half. They lead by nine. Amateur trying to make something happen against Oliver. Big rebound by Hammonds. Tommy Hammonds again crashing both boards and doing a yeoman's job here. Hammonds has hit seven out of nine shots, wants it again, double team. Nestle knocked that one away, and Amaker has it. Both teams seem to be going at 78 RPM right now. They need to settle down, particularly Duke. They're the ones who have to get the good shots right now. They need to settle down, run some patterns. <laughs> Tried to get an underneath on the alley-oop. Great job by Munlin, who got a hand in the way. And Munlin was a saving grace that time. Again, someone hasn't put pressure on the passer in these alley-oop situations. Nestle is back in there in the middle. Georgia Tech running its offense as well as I've seen them do it all year long. Now Ferry is on Hammonds, who has hit seven out of nine shots and has 14 points. Pharrell leaned into one and he walked. Good continuity by Georgia Tech. That time Pharrell was in a crowd and couldn't get his steps together. 7.40 to go in the first half. We have a timeout here at Duke. It's Georgia Tech. Clear vision at the basket. What a first half for Tom Hammonds. 14 points, four rebounds. He's hit seven out of nine from the floor. Georgia Tech is a team shooting brilliantly, 11 out of 14. A lot of those have come inside. Nice move by Bricky, and he'll draw the foul from Munlin. I'll tell you, that time, great fake by Bricky. Dwayne Farrell has got to realize he can stay on his feet. Bricky is not a proven player as of yet, and Dwayne Farrell, here he is, uh, one of the leading scorers on his team, a potent weapon offensively and defensively. He's got somewhat of an advantage, particularly inside. Stay on your feet, make the man prove himself. Bricky at the line. Excellent athlete out of Fayetteville. Hits the first. Our statistician, John the Machine Madry, pointed out that uh, that Dwayne Farrell has not scored, and we both agreed so far, Len, he didn't have to. Well, no, I tell you, Tom Hammonds has been the focal point in this offense, but you know Farrell is there, and that's what's important for Georgia Tech. He's the third leading scorer in the ACC at 17-9. But if you have someone who's hitting seven or nine shots, get him the ball. 
misses Munlin. Rick, uh, Nestle follows him out. Ricky's doing an excellent job of overplaying him. This ball is going to be out to Georgia Tech as Farrell goes to the floor with Ricky. Bobby Kremen seems to be a little bit upset here. He thought there was a foul. Ricky and going after the ball kind of upended Dwayne Farrell and thought it should have been a foul call there. And here's a traveling violation called on Dalrymple. Well, Bruce didn't get his feet set, but what's happening here is Georgia Tech's running a lot of pick downs. They're having their guards, particularly Dalrymple, set up low, bring someone from the dotted line, pick down, let him work his way around and get the ball in a clear area so he can take it to the basket. Georgia Tech has turned the ball over eight times, Duke seven. Here's Ferry. He wants some offense out of the big man from Bowie, Maryland. Missed that shot, and the rebound of Munlin, who's done a nice job. Farrell. Munlin, offensive rebound, and there's Amaker again. Cardinal Aaron will put it on the floor. And look at Dalrymple. Hustle back and took it away. And Dalrymple is one of the best at the business in trailing the play and passing the ball away from people from behind. Munlin with an air ball from six feet, but the rebound went to Hammonds, and he's fouled. Here you see Dalrymple trailing the play from behind. He's got great foot quickness for a big guard. Nestle comes out of the ball game. John Smith is back in there, so it's Amaker, Smith, Quinn Snyder, Strickland, and Ferry. Georgia Tech has gone to the bench only once. That was to get Munlin in for four. And Hammonds will go to the line for the first time. He is an exceptional free throw shooter as well, but missed that one. Well, this is going to be a difficult situation for Duke all evening, considering the lineup they have in now. When the ball moved away from Hammonds, and Hammonds was on the weak side, he was left only to contend with Strickland, Snyder, and even Amaker on the weak side board, so he's going to have his way. Tom Hammonds with 15 first-half points. It's an eight-point lead for the Jackets. Hammonds, I think, is capable of being an all-time forward in this league. Snyder and they call a hand check you might be I might have been able to hear Dick Paparo calling the foul on Bruce Dalrymple that's his second and again that's another instance where you're going to see a lot of the hand play cut out by the officials right now that creates frustration and aggravation on the part of the players as time goes on you cut it out now and you don't have to worry about it and Dalrymple will go out with his second foul and that uh, the explosion you heard with Craig Neal coming in was from the Duke fans who had planned to get on him today. He is the selected target. Smith into Neal, and Neal called for the block. Well, Craig Neal did the right thing in trying to help out as the pass was thrown over the defense. He steps in here, but he's no match for Smith in an attempt to draw the offensive foul. He steps into Smith's path. That is the sixth team foul against Georgia Tech. Smith will go to the line on the shooting situation. He is four out of four from the line and six points. Comes in as a 78% free throw shooter. And this is all from a guy who hadn't had a great deal of experience last year. And it shows you what a summer can do. If you're given the opportunity and you set your mind right. to working hard enough, John Smith can be one of those success stories. Len, he has not proven to be a, a, a good rebounder so far, averaging less than four a game, but that should come in time. Finally misses one. Five out of six in the first half. A seven-point lead for Georgia Tech. They have the ball. And Neal has been on fire from three-point range. Watch him for that in ACC games. He's hitting almost 64% of long-range bombs. And you can see Tommy Amaker respects that. He's overplaying Craig Neal, even though Neal was about 20 feet, 25 feet from the basket. Hammonds fouled by Smith on the way in. That's number two on John Smith. And Duke is working itself into some foul trouble. Nestle committed a personal early, but Perry and Smith both have two. And Nestle also has two. And Mike, the quickest way to foul trouble, particularly with your front line, is to allow players to flash into that lane with you behind them. If you allow someone to step into the lane and you play directly behind them, a good player is going to be able to at least get a shot off, if not draw the foul. Hammonds out of Crestview, Florida. 15 points so far. He's missed two out of three free throws, however. Made seven out of nine field goal attempts. Had multiple injuries this year. Shoulder problem, muscle injury in his back. 
had the flu earlier in the year and really I think just right now is getting healthy and that's bad news for everyone else they have to play. The man plays with a big heart because he hasn't missed the game despite those injuries. Got it into Smith, all the way jumper. Mullen with a rebound. Duke, Duke not good. getting second shots. They're content to taking the quick shot, Mike. That time Smith recognized he had two people on him, but instead of finding the open man, he opted to turn baseline and throw up a quick shot. 28-20, Georgia Tech, 5-12 to go in the half. Mullen passed up on the shot. Farrell oh. missed, tips. Barry saved it for Smith. Again, Georgia Tech exhibiting a lot of patience. They came up short that time, but they're going to make Duke work defensively. Quinn Snyder for three. Hit one earlier. Neal with a rebound. Snyder tried to swipe it from him. Couldn't do it. And the opposite of that is the fact that Duke is not exploring the Georgia Tech defense. They're settling for the quick outside shot or the quick turnaround. We're down to four minutes, 34 seconds to go. Hammonds. Eight out of ten from the floor for Tom Hammonds, and he has 18 points in the first half. And if there's any doubt as to that man's versatility, there he put it on the floor with his left hand, got himself in great position for the jump shot. A pretty move by Smith. He got around Mundlin, and they've got the foul underneath. Well, Mundlin is unhappy with the call, but I'll tell you what, Bobby Kremens is unhappy with the play. Here, Mundlin stands right behind Smith, and again, as I mentioned, you cannot play behind any good offensive post player because he's going to be able to utilize your stationary position. You've got to stay up on one side, force it, the uh, offensive passer to throw to the side that you anticipate. That way you can get some help. If you play right behind the guy, he's going to use your position against you. Smith has hit five out of six here in the first half. Really been a fine for Mike Krzyzewski. Did I hear somebody shush you, Mike? Uh, gee, I hope not. <laughs> Amazingly quiet, as you mentioned, when Duke is on the free throw line. I heard Certainly somebody a possibility, say, but. <laughs> All right, we'll do it then. This time. Seven out of eight from the floor for John, or from the free throw line for John Smith. One field goal. He has nine points. That's Robert Bricky who checks back into the ball game. Munlin will come out, and Ford will come back in for Georgia Tech. Ford working with two personal fouls. It's an eight-point game, 4.14 to go in the half. Now Neal is being guarded by Snyder. Farrell leads in, offensive foul, Dwayne Farrell. Well, Farrell being the leading scorer on this team hasn't had many opportunities today. Here he gets a nice pick down low from Hammonds. He whips himself around it. But rather than settling for the jump shot, noticing that Strickland is playing him tight, he decides to bully his way in and is caught. It was a good call in Farrell's first foul. Strickland to amateur. Abdel Nabi wants the ball down low. Strickland on the line and got it for two. Can't leave him alone out there. Quinn Snyder did a great job of faking the drive, bringing the defensive man who plays Strickland towards him, then dishing it off. The students in the zoo trying to get the Blue Devils back in it. They're down by six. Hammonds got it inside to Ford. He's fouled by Abdel Nabi. Well, Abdel Nabi now is probably getting a little more aggressive defensively rather than playing right behind the man he's stepping up trying to contest the pass that time he was detected for reaching in but that's the type of defensive play you have to have inside you can't be content with staying there Bobby Kremens takes his leading score out of the ball game Dwayne Farrell leading score on the season that is Hammonds is the one who has got the points this afternoon with 18 as Ford goes to the line and Dow Rimples back in so they've got a three guard off him. that's a luxury that Bobby Kremens never thought he'd have be able to take Dwayne Farrell out of the game. That's for sure. Ford gets the roll. Antoine Ford with seven first half points and three out of three from the free throw line where he has been suspect shooting only 66 percent. Well, if there's ever a time that Georgia Tech needs and now now is that time. That's free throw this time is short but we've got a lane violation and the ball will go to Georgia Tech. Well, that time, two players underneath, one from Duke, one from Tech, stepped in too early. The officials detected both of them, and consequently, a jump ball. 
and the possession clock gives the ball to the Jackets. Tyler and Elmore along with Paul Cameron. Glad you could join us here this afternoon. Georgia Tech's basketball. Tech shooting 66.7% in the first half. And really doing a job on the boards against the Blue Devils. Well, their inside game is really rolling here, and Tom Hammonds is the reason. Hammonds with 18 first half points. They tried to pass inside to Farrell. He's followed by Bricky. And Georgia Tech is just marching back and forth to the free throw line. Well, what's happening here is Duke is now starting to overplay people, and that time Bricky took his eye off Pharrell. Pharrell goes back door, and just that split second, losing sight of Pharrell cost Bricky a foul. Pharrell at the line, 81% on the year, shoots 54% from the floor. Hits the first to get another. And the other important thing in coming out of that timeout and putting Pharrell back in the ball game, that play was a design play. They want to get Pharrell, you know, get him started now because if he gets involved in this ball game, offensively particularly, Tech is going to be in for a big day. He's the leading scorer on the ball club, third leading scorer in the ACC, and he uncharacteristically misses one. 32-24, an eight-point spread. Strickland, Bricky, Snyder, Amaker, and Abdel Nabi on the floor for Mike Krzyzewski. And now Duke is exploring the Georgia Tech defense. They're not content with pulling up and taking the first shot they get their hands on, but they're still not able to get the ball inside. Bricky. Ford came over to help out, and we got a traveling violation as Georgia Tech player Oliver goes to the bench, or goes to the floor. And here Antoine Ford is doing what he should as a center, getting very active in the lane. He's going to contest anything that's shot from that particular area. And I guarantee you, even though Duke got, their, got the possession of that particular ball, they're going to be thinking about Antoine Ford when they're inside. You're wondering what Oliver was doing in there. He had 12 rebounds in the game earlier this year. Like Dalrymple, he can really go to the boards. And the turnover story, Tech uh, may be letting George, or may be letting Duke back in the ball game by not handling the ball real well. Ford was looking the other way, and they tried to get it to John Smith, and now the officials will confer and give the ball back to Duke, saying Georgia Tech touched it. And Bobby Crimmins is saying, you made the call, let's stick with it. But Pharrell did get a piece of that. Right there, you see it. And it was a good call. The officials are on the job here, all three of them, and they're not, they're not afraid to huddle here and make the correct call. He saved a bucket there by tipping that ball. Ford was looking out toward the top of the circle. This is Ferry. And Danny Ferry can't hit the open jump. Greg Neal will bring it up for the Yellow Jackets. 2.16 to go in the first half. Georgia Tech has played very, very well. Good pass to Hammonds. And Hammonds has 20. And Hammonds did a very smart thing that time, recognizing as soon as he received the ball, he was going to get pressure. The lane was clogged. He pulled up, with, which was within his range, and took the nice short jump shot. Ferry over Hammonds, and Danny Ferry finally gets off the schneid. He's got four points now. Hammonds has done an excellent defensive job against him. Well, that's, that was one of the matchups that we spoke about that you have to watch, and so far it's gone Georgia Tech's way. Hammonds being guarded by Smith. If you watch down low, watch how Ferry is contesting the pass in the four. Oliver had it blocked by Amaker, and then Oliver committed the personal trying to get it back. Amaker is just so good on defense. Well, here Oliver makes a nice drive. Amaker forces him to change the shot, even deflects it. And that time Oliver compounds the, the mistake by fouling Tommy Amaker. But it's important to note that Amaker is, even though he's six feet tall, he's bigger than that defensively. He forces a lot of people to change their shots. Amaker has had an uncharacteristic five turnovers today. He has been averaging all year only 2.08 turnovers a ball game, which is excellent. Once again, it is silent in here. Georgia Tech has got to be careful now. This is the point where Duke is going to try to extend their defense, force some turnovers, bring the crowd into this game. Georgia Tech would be smart to just play their regular pattern offense, take what Duke gives them. They have done one thing, Len, that you said was important before this game started. They have literally taken the crowd out of it. As long as they don't turn it over here or take some ill-advised shots, they can probably keep the crowd out, but they have to be patient right now. And 
and they're good at running their pattern type of offense. Six-point game as Snyder comes out on Neal. Neal all the way, dumps it off for four. I tell you, Mike, I see a big difference in Antoine Ford's, Antoine Ford's play today as opposed to other days. He's not hesitating when he gets the ball. He's looking at the basket, which he should, at seven feet. I agree with you, Len. When he is on, Georgia Tech is very, very tough to beat, and Ford knocks it away from Smith. They'll call Ford for reaching in. That is three on the big guy out of the Bronx. Just a, a, a half step too slow, but Antoine Ford attempts to beat John Smith to the spot. That time he had his right arm resting on Smith's back, but defensively he had the right idea. When a player flashes across the lane, the defender has to beat him to the spot. It does no good just to reach and try to deflect the ball. You've got to get your whole body to the spot ahead of the offensive player. Antoine Ford will go to the bench with nine points and three personal fouls. John Smith at the line also has nine on seven out of eight free throws. Well, it really gets eerie in here, doesn't it? You wouldn't think people with uh, blue faces and blue hair could be that quiet. 36-29, the lead is seven under a minute to go in the half. Look for Duke maybe to step up a little bit of the pressure here. 36-30, Nestle will come in, Smith will go out. Smith with two personal fouls, possibly Mike Krzyzewski doesn't want him to pick up a, uh, a cheap third one in the last 58 seconds. And Duke does try and pick up full court. Snyder loses his man, but oh, he got away with a little bit of a double dribble, Brian Oliver. Oliver guarded by Snyder. This is Strickland on Farrell. Hammond's now being guarded by Bricky. And he has eaten everybody alive who has come near him so far today. Well, Georgia Tech recognizes this might be their last possession of this half going to make sure they get a good one. Craig Neal calls the play, and they're going to run something that's going to allow them to get Pharrell open. There it is. Shot won't go. Rebound to Nestle. Mike Krzyzewski says hold it for one shot. The shot clock is off. The clock you see is the game clock. Snyder. What a shot by Quinn Snyder. 36-32. And Georgia Tech will not get a last shot at it. So Duke takes away a lot of the momentum of an excellent Georgia Tech first half and closes within four. Our halftime score, Georgia Tech 36, Duke 32. Three for Georgia Tech, and remember they have less of a bench than Duke does, and Ford usually gets into foul trouble. They have Munlin behind him. More importantly, Ford keys that defense of Georgia Tech. They funnel a lot inside, and they hope that Antoine Ford is going to block the shot. He has to stay in. Duke with the basketball and a chance to cut into a four-point lead. This is Quinn Snyder. Got away from Dalrymple for a second. And Snyder just air mails one out of bounds. Here, Duke trying to set up a play to isolate John Smith on the side, and they just miss misfired on that particular pass. Look at Billy King on the sideline with that cast on his wrist sitting beside assistant coach Bob Bender, who was quite a player in his day at Duke. Hammonds. He has 22 points. He just 10 picked, of 12 from the floor. He picked up where he left off the last time, and, and that's Tom Hammonds' shot, so he gets it. He's smart. He doesn't put it on the floor unless it's necessary, and he's got a fine touch. Nestle. Good pass inside to Smith. Double pump. Lost it on the way up, and Hammonds has it. Well, as we mentioned in the first half, when Ford blocks shots, he forces people inside to think about him. That time, Smith, rather than going up quickly, looked around, waiting for Antoine Ford. Hammonds is on fire, and they want to get him the ball at every opportunity. That time, they knocked it away, but Amaker couldn't hold it. Lost it out of bounds. It's interesting that time Hammonds had the ball down low. Antoine Ford was wide open at the top. Here he sees Ford, and he's about to throw it, but Amaker gets his hands on the ball. Mike Krzyzewski wastes no time. One minute into the half, he calls a timeout. His club down by six with 19 minutes to go. And, Len, that's a very expensive timeout for Mike Krzyzewski to use it one minute into the half. Well, Mike didn't, he, Coach K didn't really like what he saw out there, and he had to talk it over. Dwayne Farrell makes it an eight-point lead for Georgia Tech. That is only three points for Dwayne Farrell this afternoon, the third leading scorer in the conference.
Here is the steal. Good play by Farrell. Snyder gets back, and Farrell couldn't keep his balance. It's a little too anxious. Got to pick it up before you can go anywhere with it. Young man is an athlete, though. Ford is in there in the second half, working with three fouls. Here's John Smith. He traveled. Right now, Duke just looks a little bit out of sync. Well, what's happening here is that that's the second time they've tried to isolate Smith out there on the wing against Hammonds or Pharrell. And what happens is when you get a guy who's got a hot hand like a Tommy Hammonds, you want to make him play some defense. You want to have him, want to have him expend some energy on the defensive end. Duke has already committed four turnovers in the first 141 of the second half. And here comes some full court pressure as they'd like to pick up the tempo and get something happening. Hammerker doing a good job of overplaying Oliver and then gambling, forcing Dalrymple to bring the ball up. It's not Dalrymple's strong suit. Oliver was in trouble, got it to Dalrymple. 40-32, Georgia Tech outscoring Duke 4 nothing here in the second half. And this is the type of defense Duke likes to play. They like to get you further out on the court than you're accustomed to being, get you out of your shooting range. Burrell oh, powers his way in. He'll draw the blocking foul from Amaker. Well, Georgia Tech was smart that time. They recognized the mismatch inside. Here, Pharrell is posted inside against Amaker. There's really nothing Tommy can do except possibly go, um, at least maybe go the official into calling the uh, the offensive foul. Didn't get away with it that time. Couldn't quite get there, and Pharrell will go to the line. We'll look at Amaker, who picked up his second person. Now five players from the Blue Devils have two. Pharrell one out of two from the line in the first half. It's this one. Pharrell makes the second. He can give the Jackets a 10-point lead. And does. 17-49 to go in the ball game, and Duke has yet to score in the second half. Well, Duke still has a chance to remain patient, look for some good shots, and allow the Georgia Tech defense to provide them with opportunities. Quinn Snyder was held by Dalrymple. That is number three on Bruce Dalrymple. A man they can ill afford to lose. And Bobby Kremens is a little frustrated there in a situation where you're up 10. It's not really necessary to go out reaching for the ball and gamble so much. Make them come to you. Snyder to Smith. Hammonds tried to help out, but couldn't. 13 for John Smith. The crowd trying to cheer on the Duke defense. The Blue Devils down by eight. Bad pass that time by Ford and picked off. Well, Antoine Ford is not the type of passer say a Danny Ferry is. He's not accustomed to being out there. Smith against Ford draws the foul. That is number four on Antoine Ford. And that's characteristic of, of the problems Antoine Ford has faced all year. He's played real well in spurts. But there are other times when he just about loses his concentration. Here the ball goes inside. Ford backs up and gives room. Attempts to block the shot, but he swings his arm down rather than creating an obstacle for Smith to shoot over. And he's called for the foul. Bobby Crimmins talking to him on the Georgia Tech bench. He's probably saying exactly the same thing to him, Lenny. And John Smith will go to the free throw line where he has really had a great afternoon, 42-35. Smith getting most of his points from the free throw line. Well, the message that Antoine Ford is getting, as you mentioned, Mike, is the fact that we need you. We need you in there. You can't afford to make silly fouls. You make a mistake on the offensive end, fine, forget it. But you got to keep your concentration on the defensive end. Smith pulled the string a little bit on that one, but he still hit 10 out of 12 from the strike. It's a seven-point game. And we have a timeout as Dwayne Farrell appears to have something in his eye. And he'll be attended to at the Georgia Tech bench. It's a good opportunity for the Georgia Tech assistant coaches to get their team together as well, since it's in front of their bench. A few added instructions during this particular uh, break in the action. There you see Dwayne Farrell, junior out of Baltimore, Maryland. Being attended to by the Tech medical staff. Now, in a situation like this, Len, uh, can you let him come back in the ballgame, or do you have to take him out? Well, at this particular time, I believe that he's going to have to at least take the, he's going to be able to take the ball in, because there wasn't any, I don't think, change of possession, nor was he the free-throw shooter. Gets it into Dow 
careful. Back to Farrell. Ferry on him. Farrell has not been the problem for Duke today. It's been Tom Hammonds who has 22 points. Here's Hammonds again. Finally missed one. Kept alive inside. Farrell had it blocked. Dalrymple tipped it in. Georgia Tech doing what they do best, sending those guards to the boards and crashing the offensive boards. 44-35, that's only four points today for Bruce and Dalrymple. But he's played a big role in, in their uh, lead so far today. Smith misses the shot. Officially, they are going to give that last bucket to Farrell. I could have sworn it was Dalrymple. Well, he was there, and that's what counts. I'm sure the coaches will give it to all three guys on the board in that particular instance. It's a nine-point Georgia Tech lead. Good patience by Georgia Tech. They're going to make the Duke defense play some defense and explore the possibilities here. Dalrymple can't make the play, so he kicks it back outside. Georgia Tech was left for dead by about everybody until Duke came down to Atlanta, and Tech beat them there. Started a six-game win streak. Dalrymple can't hit it. Smith with a rebound. Time Bruce Dalrymple and a leaner. A little bit off balance there. So you got to get himself set, particularly with the smaller guard, Snyder and Amaker on him. 15 minutes, 35 seconds left to go. Ferry oh. misses one. Bricky. He's tough on the boards. Robert Bricky is a great leaper. He got good position that time. 44 37. teammates saying look you gotta come to me if I'm in trouble and that's true what happens is when you pick up your dribble if your teammates are standing around with a defense like this particular defense is played by Duke you're gonna get a five-second call you have to start setting some picks you have to execute if you're gonna have to at least if you're gonna solve that particular type of defense that time Georgia Tech players ran to a spot and they just stood still Bobby Crimmins gets Craig Deal into the ball game he will go with a smaller lineup now Snyder, guarded by Neal. Ricky. Ricky has eight, and it's 44-39. Here come the Blue Devils. They're getting Georgia Tech off their feet inside. That's a mistake. You gotta stay down. Make them shoot over you if you don't have position. Neal guarded by Snyder, and Neal has been so effective in the last eight, nine games coming off the bench. Smart by Dalrymple. He backs out, recognizing he's only got, he's got Ricky on him who's a little taller than he is. Shot clock is at 17 seconds. Neal, nice move. Kicked it back outside. Here is Farrell. Make it Oliver on the boards. 46-39, big bucket for Tech there. Brian Oliver and Bruce Dalrymple take the Duke guards in the unknown territory when they go inside. That's their strength, offensive rebounding. The guards have to block out now. Abdel Nabi into the ball game, and he travels. Boy, John Smith and Hammonds are going after each other on that end of the court. Smith doesn't back down either. Well, those are two pretty big and strong young men inside, and then that's the kind of ball they like to play. Physical, they're both good inside players. Strickland will come into the Duke lineup, and Bricky will get a rest. Bricky did a good job playing Bruce Dalrymple that time. Followed him around all the picks, got in his face when he turned to face the ball, face the basket. Georgia Tech by seven. A crowd, particularly when he posts up, that's leaving the weak side kind of open. Hammonds with a running one hander won't go. Abdel Nabi had it knocked away, and Farrell was fouled by Quinn Snyder. Well, the crowd wanted a foul on the first contact rather than the second. Well, we'll see what happens right here. Here, Hammonds penetrates, throws up a shot that's not really his shot. Abdel Nabi comes up with it in an attempt to get his balance and swing around and gets knocked away. And here, Snyder fouls. Ha um, Farrell before he actually goes up to the shot. Danny Ferry comes back into the ball game. That's number two, as we said, on Snyder. And Farrell will go to the line where he is three out of four. Has seven points on the afternoon. Average is 17.9, number three in the conference. Well, this is a tough situation for the officials right now because after setting the rules in the first mm -hmm. half with all the hand checking and the pushing in the second half, you may not be able to call it quite so close. You have to allow the players to play, and both these teams are intent on going after the ball. 
Burrell gets the roll on the second, and Georgia Tech pushes the lead back to nine. Every time Duke has made a run out of Len, they've responded. And importantly, they've kept the crowd out of this so far. Snyder, who has not shot well from the floor, bounced that one off his foot. Neal goes for the steal, got a hand on it. Snyder had his foot on the sideline. Quite a job by Neal. Credit that turnover to Craig Neal. He didn't give up. When Snyder lost the ball, Snyder kind of hesitated in going after it, and Neal was right on top of him, forcing the turnover. That's desire right there. Duke has turned it over six times in the second half. Georgia Tech only three. Georgia Tech with a chance right here to take its biggest lead in the ballgame. You've got to be careful, though. When they pick up the dribble, their people, the other four people, are still just standing around. No one's picking for the other in the attempt to free people. Good pass to Dow. Bruce Dalrymple hits the layup. It's 50 to 39. He has four points. Oliver threaded the knee when he got away with one because he actually threw it in a crowd. Dalrymple did a good job of meeting the ball. Dalrymple, one of the finalists for the Naismith Award, one of a dozen players selected. Good pass to Smith. And that is Danny Ferry at his best. And there's no pressure on Ferry, a passer of his dimension. You have to put pressure on him. But even more importantly, Dwayne Farrell opened his body totally and lost sight of John Smith on the, on the baseline. 12.35 to go on this one. Georgia Tech by nine. They are desperate for a win. Farrell from 19. And if Dwayne Farrell heats up, he can put an awful lot of pressure on that Duke defense. Right now, they're relying just on Georgia Tech going into Hammond. But if he lights it up, it's going to take another defender away from helping out against Hammond. Georgia Tech now going zone. Amaker with a rare shot. He's fouled by Neal and the basket counts. And that's the type of thing that'll make a coach pull his hair out. You don't foul the jump shooter. Here, Amaker is on, on the mark with the jump shot. Neal gets a piece of his elbow. And if you're going to put your hands up, that's fine. But why foul the jump shooter? You sound like you have a true disdain for jump shooters. No, I have a disdain for those who foul them. I mean, <laughs> it's obviously a lower percentage shot for most people than, than playing inside. It's the type of thing that you're going to give them a chance if a guy's shooting 40, 45 percent from outside, get a hand up and um, decrease his opportunities. But don't give, don't give him a gift on the free throw line. Good point. 52, 44. We're reaching the 12-minute mark here in Durham. Oliver finds the open man. Now Neal gets it. He'll bring it back outside. May have been one pass too many that time. Farrell had an open jump shot after Georgia Tech had beaten Duke's double team. Neal to Farrell. Yeah. Basket counts and he's fouled. And that shows the athletic ability of Dwayne Farrell. Not only does he have good hands and good concentration, but he's a strong player once he gets it inside. Here he drives baseline. He's got somebody, John Smith, grabbing at the ball, but he's had enough upper body strength to kind of horse that ball in. That's three fouls on John Smith, and Mike Krzyzewski wants to talk to him. He sends Quinn Snyder back in the ball game. I think Coach K is going to tell John a little bit, uh, give him a little bit of a pointer on crossing the lane on those types of plays. Danny Ferry was caught on the high side of Farrell. Smith stood there and watched until Farrell got his hands on the ball. you got to get to the spot ahead of the, the offensive player. Farrell, as you see, has hit five out of six. Now make it six out of seven. So they counter the Duke three-point play with a three-point play of their own. Timeout with 11.46 to go. Georgia Tech, 50. Duke's back into a man-to-man -man now. Neal, nice pass to Dalrymple. The lane, the basket counts, and he's fouled. And Tommy Amaker just a little too late. Bruce Dalrymple flashes into the lane. A great pass by Craig Neal. That will be number three on Amaker. Fourth team foul against Duke. Georgia Tech has also committed four in the second half. He reached the bonus at seven. And Dalrymple with six points will go to the line. He's become a much better free throw shooter during his career and during this year. Makes the three-point play, and the lead climbs to 12. The story offensively today has been 20 points in the first half for Hammonds, 13 points in the second half for Dwayne Farrell. Dricky somehow got through that tangle of arms and scored. Well, speaking to that point, Mike, as far as the offensive game for Georgia Tech, one of the reasons is in the second half, you make an adjustment on a player like Tommy Hammond to provide some help. But when you do something like that, you've got to give something up. And Dwayne Farrell has exploited that. 9-23 and counting. Durham, Neal for three. Got it. Craig Neal shooting 
from three-point range, almost 65% in ACC games. He had five out of six the other night, and the lead is 13, the biggest of the game. Bricky, he is so tough inside. Well, that was pretty smooth right there. Bricky faked the pass inside, drew the defender's hands up, and even had one of them turning their head, and he winds up taking a short jumper. Oliver, who has played so well for Georgia Tech at the end of the year. No one's Sorry, Mike, no one's moving again for Georgia Tech. They got the steal on Amateur. It's the Strickland and a blocking foul on Dalrymple. And Dalrymple really upset about the call. That's his fourth. And I'd have to say, Mike, that's a pretty tough call right here. Amateur on the break, finds Strickland. Dalrymple actually was under the basket. And what happens is he may be arguing that he shouldn't have been included in the play because he was under the basket. Very difficult from the angles to see if contact was made, but the mere fact that Dalrymple stood under the basket and he should have been out of the play, and that's what he's probably arguing, that he made no contact and he was under the basket out of the play. Well, what it, whatever it was, wasn't much, and Dalrymple really upset will come out with his fourth personal foul. Antoine Ford will check back into the ball game. The lead's been cut to nine. Strickland could cut it to eight. And does. 8.43 to go in the big game in Durham at 61-53. Duke has faced this situation more than once. When they played Maryland earlier this year here in Cameron Indoor Stadium, they were down about this point, and they extended their defense, forced Maryland to a lot of turnovers, and ultimately won that game. Here they're doing the same thing. They're going to get out now and put a lot of pressure on the ball handlers. Pharrell, and he is fouled by Strickland. If Pharrell is taking responsibility of handling the ball, Strickland is attempting to guard him, and attempting to guard him, che uh, chests up to him, makes the, a contact there. In a normal game, that may have been um, inconsequential, but in a game like this, there have been a lot of inconsequential fouls in this game. And we have a timeout called by Georgia Tech. Eight tough. That's a big night for afternoon out of Tom Hammonds, who had 20 in the first half. Pharrell misses the tip in on the inbounds play. Well, the play before, Georgia Tech was forced to call a timeout because they couldn't get anyone open. That time in a play set up specifically for Antoine Ford. They couldn't get it to go down. Smith inside. Ford with four fouls. And John Smith buries the jumper to cut it to six. The Blue Devils making another run. Smith has 18. Well, Ford is now the weak link defensively for Tech with four fouls. That time he did what he should have been doing all game. That is, stay on his feet, force the play to shoot over. And John Smith is an excellent jump shooter. Pharrell, good oh. pass to Hammonds. He's fouled by Smith. The crowd thought he had the block. That is four on John Smith. Well, here's a good pass inside. Seeing he was double teamed. Smith was caught in no man's land. Looked like a pretty good block, but the officials say that they got him with the body, and who am I to argue? <laughs> Boy, he got out of that one easy. Oh, it looked like a great block by Smith, right over the top of the ball. He must have ruled he got him with the body. Dal Ripple comes back in. Unusual Bobby Crimmins playing with two guys out there with four fouls. He can put Munlin in if Ford fouls out. He has no one to replace Dal Ripple. Tom Hammonds. 23 points. His career high is 25. He got that against North Carolina State. Good look at Dalrymple. Looking at Bobby Crimmins' options, if he can keep this, um, keep this spread going down to the last few minutes, he may be able to afford to put in a three-guard offense using just Pharrell and Hammond. That'll give them a little better ball handling inside against that two pressure. Hammond goes for three, way off. Strickland offensive rebound. To Smith, he lost the ball. Dalrymple tied him up. The possession arrow will give it to Duke, but Dalrymple, man, if a ball is loose, number 45 gets his hands on it. Well, I tell you what, John Smith wasn't ready for that pass. Here Snyder looks around trying to hit someone. Smith didn't even have his eye on it until the last second. Consequently, he fumbles it, but you can be sure Dalrymple had his nose right on the ball. Smith looked like he was just defending himself on that one. Snyder had some mustard on it. Take a look at the fouls. Ford and Dalrymple with four for Georgia Tech. Smith with four for Duke. I 
having Dalrymple in there as a tribute to his experience. And he's gone now. And that is going to be the fifth foul on Dalrymple. And Bobby Crimmins doesn't like it one bit. I don't know, is this reverse clairvoyance? I was just going to say, it's a tribute to Dalrymple's experience. He knows how to defend without fouling here, and he's needed. But here he gets detected for a hand check. And that's a pretty tough call for a guy of Dalrymple's stature to have a call, which is basically a hand check, to have that go against him and actually take him out of this game for the remainder of the game. Strickland may have gotten away with one there because he was pushing off with that free arm, and they called it on Dalrymple. He is gone with 7.14 to go in the game. Very three-pointer, and the crowd will light up. It's a five-point game now. And now Georgia Tech would be hard-pressed to find some people to go through. They explored the inside very well, but now Duke has made an adjustment and clogged the inside up. Amaker with a steal, but we've got a whistle. And Dick Paparo said he stepped out of bounds. Again, Duke is really extending their pressure. They're chasing the ball from behind. And here Tommy Amaker leaves his man, steps behind, and knocks the ball away from Dwayne Farrell. Great play by Amaker. They said he was on the baseline. Amaker is just cat quick. Georgia Tech has not been able to get the ball inside lately. That's the adjustment Duke made. They recognize they're getting killed in there. They're going to force Georgia Tech to beat them from outside. It's going to be real important now for Tech to execute. You set a pick, you got to make sure you pick the player. Farrell with a tough bank shot. Dwayne Farrell has 16 points. He's going to be the man going down the stretch for Tech, and Duke is going to be aware of that. 65-58, 6 minutes, 12 seconds to go in the game. Good defense inside by Tommy Hammonds, running Danny Curry really well, not allowing him to get an open position. Amaker from long range. 65-60. Dangerous pass by Neal, but gets it to Oliver. Bad pass by Oliver. Ford just sort of turned around like, who's that for? Well, with a freshman at the point, it may be a position for Georgia Tech where they seem to be losing their poise right now. They've got to get somebody in there who's going to lead, and they've got to get all five people aware of what's going on, because Duke is making its run. 5.35 to go in the game. The Blue Devils within five. Three-pointer by Strickland. Ford had it taken away by Ferry. It's a jump ball situation. Possession arrow will give it to Georgia Tech. Duke has come out with a renewed sense of confidence right now. The ball goes up, and they're really going after it. Tech is going to have to screen off. And we've got a timeout. 5.22 to go from Cameron Indoor Stadium. 5.22 left in this game. 65-60. Georgia Tech. The Jackets have the basketball. Duke is on a 12-4 run over the last four minutes to make a game of it. Duke has extended their defense. they got some good man-to-man -man pressure on the ball handles from Georgia Tech. And Tech right now, while they can't sit on a five-point lead, they're really going to have to really execute here. He joined us late. Bruce Dalrymple fouled out of the ballgame with 7.17 left. And just the opposite of what I said. They're going to try to sit on and run that clock down just a bit before they start actually looking to the basket. Ford to Oliver. Shot clock is at 11 seconds. They get it to Hammonds. And Hammonds is fouled. Duke bailed Tom Hammonds and the Georgia Tech team out that sure time. Sure did. The ball was thrown in with a limited amount of time on the clock, less than five seconds. And Ferry commits the foul. Here you could have forced Hammonds into a shot with two people on him. Now you've given him two free throws. At least one. Hammonds with 24 points. A chance to set his career high if he makes both free throws. Four out of six from the line today. An 85.1% shooter. Got it. Tied his career high at 25. Brilliant ball game for Tom Hammond. Only a sophomore out of Crestview, Florida. And you can see in the second half, only getting four opportunities 
is Tom Hammonds, and that's a tribute to Duke's adjustment here. They start to send two and three people at him. Hit both free throws. The lead goes back to seven, and Georgia Tech has responded to every Duke run of this ballgame. Strickland guarded by Neal. Amaker has Oliver on him. Georgia Tech's defense is just a little looser right now on the outside, trying to tighten up on the inside, take away the easy buckets. They're going to make Duke hit their outside shots and earn this victory. Ferry for three. Danny Ferry has hit a couple of those. He has a dozen at 67-63. And all it takes is one play like that to bring Tom Hammonds out and force the inside to open up. Fans wanted a backcourt on that one. The Duke bench was up, too. Here again, Georgia Tech is content with trying to run the clock down, start their offense with about 10 seconds. And here's another foul, this one on Strickland. This has been a very tightly called ball game. And with Duke, maybe they can find the key. When, when Georgia Tech decides that they want to run that clock down, you can always tell because they bring Antoine Ford out to handle the ball. He's not normally a ball handler, but he is a pressure relief. And if you see Ford handling it, you can bet that they're going to try to run it down, so you may want to even leave him open. Pharrell, six out of seven from the line, 16 points. Perry with a rebound. It's a big free throw there, the front end of a one and one. Four point game, we're down to 340. Now Duke can set up and run its patterns and try to execute. Here's the steal to Pharrell. Telegra that is not the execution Mike Krzyzewski wanted. That was a telegraph pass, Mike. Danny Ferry held the ball over his head and just looked inside. Foul on Amaker is his fourth, and Mike Krzyzewski leaps off the Duke bench. He said Oliver threw an elbow. And now both, both coaches are going to wind up working the officials. As we mentioned earlier, it's a tight situation. There was a little contact there between Oliver and Amaker. It went Oliver's way this time, but you can bet both coaches are going to be working the officials now in this last three minutes and 21 seconds, recognizing the difficult situation they're in and the fact that this has been a very closely called game. Six points for Oliver. Two out of two on free throws today. Got that one, he'll get the bonus. Georgia Tech as a team, the number one free throw shooting club in the ACC, 74.7%. And the 321 looking ahead, you look at the Duke team as far as three point shooters, they've been pretty accurate today. They've only got two or three real threats. And Danny Ferry has hit a couple today, isn't one of them. Georgia Tech has hit 20 of 24 free throws. Smith, who has had a great ball game, missed that one. Whistle on the foul, Craig Neal. That's three on Neal. If this goes to overtime, we may not have enough players left. Here Smith gets a nice turnaround jump from the pass inside. Neal uses uh, Quinn Snyder as a step ladder <laughs> that time. And he got to the top rung. Al Rimmel has already fouled out for Georgia Tech. Ford is playing with four. This is Snyder, 76% free throw shooter. Rimmed out on him. Knocked out of bounds. The official's looking for help, and he'll give it out to Duke. Last touch by Hammonds. Tommy Hammonds has got to put his body on the man inside. Got to block him out and grab the rebound. That time was contested. 3.09 to go in a six-point game. Georgia Tech has had trouble in a lot of the close ones this year. Ricky is being guarded by Ford. Good pass to Ferry. What a steal by Pharrell. And now called Dwayne Pharrell for the foul to get the steal. That is two on Pharrell. Well, Pharrell made a really good move to get there, anticipated the pass. Ferry used his body well, and it probably slowed Pharrell's progress to the ball and created the contact. If Ferry hadn't turned his body to screen Pharrell off, Pharrell would have taken that ball cleanly. So Ferry will go to the line. 12 points today. He averages 14. This is the first trip to the line. 83% shooter, and he gets the first. Smith and Hammonds are going after each other, and the officials are talking to them. This time Smith took a crazy path to the basket. Hammonds is going to be aware of that this time. Barry hits them both. 
69-65, 258 left, 14 for Danny Ferry, right on his average. Now Oliver's got to do a good job of clearing so that Amaker isn't able to help out, but he does switch. Amaker wanted to spring that trap. Ford, bad pass. Snyder just out hustled for Rowan, got it, then he traveled. Lost the handle after a good hustling play. Well, Georgia Tech players, it seems like their concentration is divided now. That time the pass thrown by Ford seemed to surprise Brian Oliver. And then when the ball was loose, Quinn Snyder was the only one who reacted quickly enough. Approaching the 2.30 mark in a four-point game. Neal with a great defensive player, Amakarama, gets it to Oliver. Nice pass, and Oliver hits a big shot. And that's what we mean by moving without the ball when your player picks up the dribble. With Duke's type of pressure defense, if you stand still, you're dead. If you go back door or you set a pick, you might free someone. 2-13 and counting. Six-point lead. Snyder trying to cut it in half and can't. Pharrell gives it up to Neal. That time Pharrell did a great job of blocking out Danny Ferry. Georgia Tech now is concentrating on the little thing, blocking out on seeing the ball. Antoine Ford wide open. Ferry got there late. It's an eight-point Georgia Tech lead. And Antoine Ford with his first bucket of the second half. He has 11. And this is the time Duke is going to have to set up someone outside in three-point range. There's Ferry. I think that's three three-pointers in a row for Danny Ferry. He cuts the lead to five points. Time now becoming a factor with 140 left in the game. There's a timeout at Cameron. A lot of coaches to develop quick hitting plays just like that. And there you see the timeout situation and it goes counter to everything they've done their entire career trying to go inside. Now they got to work on things to get people outside. Five point game. Danny Ferry has gotten Duke back in it with three three point shots. Neal guarded by Strickland. You see the clock in the lower right-hand portion of the screen. Georgia Tech really concerned about the time much more than scoring, although they'd love to score. Well, they're going to spread it out like this again. As soon as the dribble is picked up, people have to come and meet the ball, or if they're overplayed, they've got to go back door, and the passer has to be aware. Shot clock's at 10. Neal, nice pass, gets it off to Hammond. Hammonds last touched it out of bounds with 59 seconds. That one could have put it away. And the danger in running the clock down to the barest of seconds is the fact that when you finally get it in the shooter's hands, he may not be on balance. He may feel rushed. And that's what happened to Tommy Hammonds that time. 53 seconds to go. Does Duke go for another three-pointer? They're down by five. Amaker walked. And Mike Krzyzewski is telling the official who made the call that there was another fish, official in better position to make that particular call. Standing right beside him, in fact. But that's why they have three. That's right. Otherwise, they'd need only one. Here's the situation. 48 seconds left. Georgia Tech is up by five. We are quickly reaching that point when Duke may have to foul. Neal, he's got a two-on-one if he wants it. And he's fouled by Amaker. Amaker did a good job going for the ball, so it's a one-on-one. -one. That will be five, however, on Tommy Amaker. He is fouled out of the ball game with 45 seconds left. Bruce Dowerful fouled out for Georgia Tech a long time ago, 7-17. The thing about Neal, he has not missed the front end of a one-on-one -one this year. The interesting thing about that particular play was that Neal found himself with a two-on-one. Only Danny Ferry was back. He had Dwayne Farrell on the other side, and he had to make a decision. Should he back it up with about 46 seconds left, or should he attack the two-on-one? Luckily, Tommy and Tommy Amaker made the decision for him. Neal with three points on one three-point shot. Hits the free throw. Big shot there, 74-68. I would think Bobby Crimmins would think he made the right decision pulling it out. Well, there are two schools there. You know, you want to take, if you're given an opportunity, you want to take advantage of it. But now, after the two free throws, looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> 75, 68, 39 seconds to go. Snyder, three-pointer, wouldn't go. Ricky, follow, good. 75, 70, Duke, now down to 14. Well, you can't say that he didn't have the opportunity, but Antario, they would go to 16 and 8 overall, 7 and 5 in the ACC. The conference standings are almost meaningless because if you're fourth or fifth in the league, you end up uh, playing each other anyhow. 
but a win here for Georgia Tech not only makes people open their eyes a little bit as to their predicament, they've got one of the toughest schedules in the nation, and at 16 and 8, they still have an opportunity. Pass inside will result in a jump ball situation. No, it won't. It will result in a foul on Dwayne Farrell. And that's a tough play. They got Antoine Ford taking the ball out of bounds, who cannot be the best passer on that Georgia Tech team. And what the mistake that he made was that he threw the ball up for grabs. Instead of throwing it over Dwayne Farrell's shoulder, allowing him to go get it, he just threw it up for grabs. And he can't have that. The game's not solved it away yet. Both teams have been brilliant from the free throw line. Duke 18 of 21, Georgia Tech 24 of 28. If there was ever time for a block out now for Georgia Tech, this is it. Missed the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. Ford with a rebound, and Neal is fouled by Snyder. That is number four on Snyder. More importantly, the clock is down to eight seconds. Georgia Tech with a five-point lead, and you can put this one in the books for the Yellow Jackets. They have won their 16th and Lynn probably the most important win they've had this year. As you said, very critical for them in the NCAA. All they have to do tomorrow is uh, fly to Chicago and play DePaul on the road. Then they play at Clemson, and then they have North Carolina in the Omni. Nice way to finish, huh? Well, playing three ranked teams, particularly the number one team in the country, or arguably so, has not been um, one of the sweetest parts of the schedule for Georgia Tech. But this gives them some confidence. They can more or less relax at DePaul and play some basketball, explore some things, knowing, again, that the NCAA tournament people are going to consider their tough record. Neal, six out of six from the line. Farrell intercepts the desperation inbounds pass, and Duke will not bother to foul as the clock ticks down, and that's it. Georgia Tech has won a big one, 79 